Welcome back. So far we have made a VSM for our current state and then in the last lesson we have gone through a few lean guidelines like produce to your tag time. Number two, try to maintain continuous flow wherever possible so that we do not have to schedule production for each process section. And number three, install a supermarket where continuous flow is not possible. Though supermarkets results in some WIP, it eliminates the need to schedule the supplying process. Using these three guidelines, we keep on eliminating the need of scheduling till only one process is left which needs to be scheduled. Now in this lesson, we will continue with point number four, where we are going to send the customer schedule to only this one process, which we will name as the pacemaker process because how you control the production at this process now sets the pace for all the upstream processes. For example, if you stop producing at the pacemaker process, the chai part at the pacemaker process will not get consumed and the upstream process will not receive empty bins or kanbans, so they will not produce either, right? One more point. The material movement from the pacemaker process to finished goods need to happen in a flow. Or in other words, there will be no WIP between the pacemaker process and the finished goods store. That means, generally the pacemaker process is the most downstream continuous flow section in my value stream. So if we are planning a number of supermarkets like this, our pacemaker process could be this one, since the continuous flow is happening only from the process section 4 to the finished goods. Else, we can use FIFO lane which is represented by this symbol and in that case we can have a continuous flow from the process section 2 to the finished goods and then the process section 2 can become the pacemaker process. Now you may ask what's a FIFO lane? Well think of FIFO lane as a chute that can hold only a certain amount of inventory. The supplying process will feed the parts from the one end and the customer process will receive the parts on the other end. If the FIFO lane gets full, the supplying process must stop producing until the customer has used up some of the inventory. Once the FIFO inventory starts getting used, empty bins will be released as Kanban to the supplying process so that it can resume production. And as you have already guessed, process section 3 and 4 will follow the same production sequence as in process section 2. Since whatever part goes first in these FIFO lanes, comes out first from the other end, first in, first out, right? Many of you must have noticed by now that there is a difference between supermarket and FIFO lane. In supermarkets, the upstream process is producing as per the requirement of the downstream process. But in the FIFO lane, the downstream process is producing based on the sequence of the upstream process, opposite. So once we have achieved a continuous flow with production scheduling at only one process step, the pacemaker process, we can move to the point number five, where we distribute the production of different products evenly over time at the pacemaker process. Or we can say, leveling the production mix. Now most of the organization finds it easier to manufacture long runs of one product type and avoid changeovers but this can create many problems for the rest of the value stream. For example, if I have three products A, B and C, where A is the highest selling product, it may make sense to keep on producing A and taking a changeover only when the stock of B or C is about to finish. So let us say I am producing A, suddenly I get to know that B is almost finished, I take a changeover and start producing B. As soon as B is replenished, I change over to A again and start producing. Now soon there comes a requirement for C, so I change over again, fill the stock for C and then change over back to A. Then perhaps keep on making A for 3-4 days continuously till B and C stocks are available. The obvious disadvantage of this approach is that we could not predict the changeovers in advance. But the bigger problem is, because of these irregular changeovers, we also cannot predict which product will run next and for how long. So we need to have larger inventory 
of all the child parts in the upstream processes. And this more inventory will again lead to higher lead times. What we want to do here is to decide the production sequence according to the customer requirement. Let us say the requirement of product A is four times of the product B or C. Then I'm going to make product A for the first four days and then change over and make product B on the fifth day and then change over and make product C on the sixth day. Then I will repeat this cycle. We can make minor adjustments as per the customer need, but at least now we can plan our child parts based on the standard production cycle. Once this is done, then immediately we should be working on number six, to develop the ability to make every part every day, then every shift, then every hour, every pallet, trolley, in all the upstream processes. This can be done by reducing the change over time. Let us say we have 20 hours available per day and it takes 18 hours to run the daily requirement. So I have two hours available for change over. If my change over time is one hour, I can do two change overs per day. That means I can produce only two type of parts per day. Now, if I have a total eight different types of parts, the next turn for any part will come after four days. So ideally, I need to have at least four days of inventory for each model. Let us say we have reduced the change over time to 30 minutes. So I need only one hour for the two change overs. The first instinct is to increase the production to 19 hours a day. Don't do that. It will only result in overproduction. But instead, we should target on increasing the changeovers to four times a day and produce smaller lots. Now with this improved capacity of producing smaller lots, four different types of parts can be produced each day. Or in other words, we can produce every part every two days. And thus, now ideally, I need only two days of inventory of each model. See, by reducing each part every cycle, I can drastically reduce my inventory. Also, now my processes can respond faster to the customer requirement. That means improved lead time, right? Now, I believe we have a good understanding of lean manufacturing tools and we are ready to make the value stream map for our future state. Let's do it in the next lesson. See you there.